Okay, hi guys. So we are finally here. Uh, the promised, long promised video where I'm going to go through all of my binders, uh, all of my envelopes, and I'm gonna tell you what I use uh, each one for. I remember doing this video like three years ago when I first started my channel. There's been so many new people subscribing. Hello, thank you, first of all. Well, and yeah, I just wanted to re-explain and also a lot of people have had questions about my placeholder bills, the one euro bills, how I deal with all of that. So I'm just gonna explain it to you all today. If you have any other questions after this video, leave them down in the comments below and I will answer them. But let's just start. I'm gonna explain going what I usually, in the order I usually go, which is cash envelopes, short-term seeking funds, etc. So let's start with the black binder. The black binder is, um, my binder that I use for daily, not daily, also daily, uh, daily and weekly spending. So when I say cash envelopes, I usually mean these two, three categories, groceries, spending, and dine out. Um, uh, these amounts I add regularly each week. I have a certain set budget for them. Groceries is self-explanatory, anything. I buy at the grocery store, anything that's food related. Spending is usually coffee, maybe like a bus ticket, something like gum or something small. Um, and dine out is everything where I eat out at restaurants, I order food in, etc., etc. So, um, Gas is also self-explanatory. I usually use this money not only for gas, but for taxis and stuff like that. Um, but as I share my car with uh, my sister, usually I don't drive it that much, so I don't have to get gas that often. But about the placeholder bills. So these are uh, fake bills. These are placeholder bills. And the reason how I distinguish uh, them in my binders, uh, in real life, they do look different also by touch and these are not reflective. Uh, the real bill, do I have any other real bills on hand? I don't think so, let me check. Um, so let's, for example, this is a real 10 and this is a fake 10 that I use. So you can see kind of the differences, um, but um, why I use fake bills and not real cash in my envelope. So. Mainly uh, due to the reason because I don't like that much cash just laying around and also if uh, cash money in cash is just st sitting in envelopes um, they use value so most of my money is prop money and all of that money is sitting in my savings account represented um, by categories so in my savings account I have let's say different categories that say long-term sinking funds short-term sinking funds spending etc etc and each uh, savings account has a specific amount in it that represents the amount that is actually in the envelope. So basically in gas, I have 120 euros currently. And in my savings account, I do have uh, a cat folder, let's say that has gas and it has 100 and 20 euros in it. So technically, if I take five euros out of here, I'm gonna take five euros out of that savings account in my bank account. Uh, the reason why I do it is because all my savings accounts accrue interest daily and it brings me more profit to keep it in the bank and not use cash, uh, especially if it's like we're gonna go to the long-term sinking funds in, um, in a bit, but those categories, I don't really spend at all out from so they're mainly for my future so like babies technology wedding i don't spend money on from those envelopes like maybe even i haven't spent like let's say any long-term uh, long-term sinking funds money this year at all so all of that money just sitting in cash would make no sense because for now it already has accrued like 40 or 50 euros interest in total just for this year alone sitting in the bank so that's how i distinguish oh i check uh, two, twice a month all of my amounts in the bank and in the um, um folders it should always match up sometimes it doesn't but then i move some funds around and it just makes sense uh some people find this very annoying very complicated because it's like double booking but for me it just makes more sense to keep it in the bank and not in cash because it just 
it would lose so much money. I also have a lot of money sitting in stocks and uh, cryptocurrency and gold. So it all accrues me more interest than it does what it would be just sitting in cash here. So most, that's why I use uh, mainly prop bills. The categories where I use cash, it, like real cash, are these three uh, grocery spending and dine out because I use those daily. Also some for like uh, my specific appointments, let's say facial, uh, laser removal, uh, maybe some of my therapists I pay in cash. So I keep those amounts in cash. So also when I cash stuff money, I put the bills in order. Like I'm going, I know that I'm going to put uh, first spending. So I put a five here and then the rest fives are placeholder fives because I know that by the order that I go, I'm going to use the fake bills. Once again, this system might be complicated to some, but it has to make sense for me and my budget, which it does. And that's why I'm just thankful that I've figured a system that works for me. And yes, I didn't probably give you a disclaimer that this video is going to be very long because I feel like this is long overdue and a lot of people just don't. Uh, understand my system that's why i'm here i hope i explain it clearly so next is rent i use this money for rent once again for example i pay rent in cash right now i only have 50 euros in cash but my next time i'm paying rent is only in june so by june i'm going to take out money from my bank account and then i'm going to exchange this money into real bills so i can pay for my rent um, now i have started stuffing rent uh, in 50s like in real 50s and so I don't have to do with the double exchange utilities once again self-explanatory uh, this ev makes even more sense because I pay utilities from my bank account so it would make sense to put it in cash and then put it back in my bank account and stuff like that so I just keep it in my bank and use these bills to represent the money I have in the bank allocated to utilities then uh, the next question is about the one uh, euro bills a lot of people have questions about these first is I made these bills myself they're not real they don't don't exist in the European Union. I made them for easier storage and counting because I do have a lot of um, things that I don't pay in amounts that end with zero or five. So I didn't want to keep coins. Uh, US dollars have one uh, dollar bills and I decided to make one euro bills to just represent the amount. Once again, question, how do I keep track of this? So I do have, once again, allocated envelope in my drawer that has currently 50 euros in cash and uh, I have 51 euro bills across all my envelopes. So the moment that I add more one euro envelopes, I add more real cash in there to kind of represent the, to keep track of how much actually ones I have across all my envelopes. So let's say across all my envelopes, I currently have 51 euro bills, which is 50 euros. That's why I have 50 euros put aside to represent these ones. Uh, once again, if I add or take out uh, ones, uh, I change that amount. Once again, maybe very complicated to some. It works, makes sense in my brain. It uh, helps me keep track and it, it's so, so much easier to just use coins or just every single time. For example, if I pay 23 euros, I don't have to take out 25 from here and then those two euros are kind of lost. I just take out 23 and put two year, one euro bills in here, which makes sense. And then what else did I want to say about the one euro bills? Oh yeah. So a lot of people are asking me if you can get them, you can, you can get them on my Etsy shop in the link down in the description below. Uh, very convenient if you're actually a cash stuffer regularly, um, etc. So moving on from utilities. Uh, miscellaneous is next it's kind of an envelope for fun so i have sp split this in four seasons winter summer spring and fall and then miscellaneous so it's everything that might suddenly come up that don't actually um, the expenses don't have a other category so let's say i want to go to a museum and it's like eight euros i can't really take it from spending because it's not really spending it's something miscellaneous so i would take it from the spring envelope and i would take eight euros out to cover that um i mainly use this for like random cinema appointments as i said museums maybe like something that comes up like bowling or something that i don't really have in my budget a place to take the money from 
So I like to keep, let's say, 100 for, for each season and then 100 in the miscellaneous. So altogether it would be 500, but I managed to spend this faster than actually saving. So it only has 76 euros in here for now. Um, upkeep is uh, an envelope that I created to have money that if suddenly something breaks in my apartment or my car and I need to uh, quickly replace it, I wanted to have like a buffer um, that I have spending it around. So for example, I bought a blender recently. I got this from Upkeep because it's kind of for my apartment or if I went to Ikea, I spent like 200 euros for furniture. I took it from Upkeep. Uh, I created this and I thought I'm going to keep it at 1000, but it currently has 600 and it's enough for me because I do have my other binder which we're gonna get to next but this is kind of a envelope this is basically like a buffer emergency fund for if anything very very urgent technically comes up with the apartment or the car I do have a separate emergency fund for very big unexpected spendings but this is mainly just like as I said a buffer if something urgent happens so that was the black binder for now let me put it on the side we're moving to the other binder. Uh, this is the purple binder. This is why one month ahead binder. So uh, this is kind of what I meant with upkeep. Uh, this is going to be also my emergency fund, but in a different way. So this is everything that I would need for one month of spending. I'm talking cash envelopes, what I said, grocery spending, dine out, everything for my beauty appointments, my health appointments, household needs like coffee, uh, cleaning supplies, etc. housing, which is rent and utilities, miscellaneous, once again, like random gas, uh, taxi, um, no, no, museum, uh, sports is gym and Pilates and transport is once again gas and stuff like that. So I created this as a kind of way to make sure I'm one month ahead on everything. So I'm saving and in case something happens, I do have this one month of um, money I can use uh, and not worry about not being able to pay bills or uh, paying like... I don't know, my appointments or whatever I need. So these categories are kind of reflected already in my other binders, but this is spe specifically binders just being one month ahead. One, once I'm done with this the total amount, I think is 1,850. Once I'm done with this, I do plan to do it again. So my entire goal for my budget is I would like to be ideally six to 12 months ahead on all of my things. So having six times 1,850 would be enough of a buffer for me on top of my emergency fund to live um, safely and not be stressed about if I can't find a job or whatever. So that's kind of what I strive to have. And that's what kind of my parents always taught me is that you need to have six to 12 months of, uh, let's say, income you can spend as you would spend now to make sure that you are well off and that you don't have to worry about changing your lifestyle or whatever if some if push came to shove. So once again, this is specifically for my budget. I'm not telling you ha should have a binder just for this, but I've seen a lot of YouTubers have a specific one month ahead binder. It just makes my mind more um, calmer to know that I, in case of anything, I do have this money. And of course, if anything comes up, I will take that money out of there and allocate it to something more important. But for now, to the two, knock on wood, I hope nothing happens. So now we're on our way to short-term sinking funds. So once again, short-term sinking funds are funds that I use weekly or monthly. So beauty, health, um, clothing, uh, I don't know, holidays, stuff like that. Um, and that's this uh, distinguish, distinguishment between short-term sinking funds and long-term sinking funds. Long-term sinking funds are something that I am saving for my future. So for example, I don't have children yet, but I, I do have a long-term sinking fund for children where I'm saving in advance. So mainly sinking short-term sinking funds is something that I will spend weekly or monthly out of. And I do have two binders for those here so short-term sinking funds first binder is ruby rose 
here we have the category beauty and beauty has five tabs i also do make these tabs as a custom order on etsy so if you want to get them let me know um i have nails facials laser hair and body and miscellaneous as categories here nails self-explanatory manicures pedicures facials every time i go to get a facial um i take the money from here laser is laser hair removal i also take the money from that hair and body is everything for like brows um haircuts uh, like body products body procedures piercings tattoos stuff like that and then miscellaneous is everything else that would be covered by beauty um beauty products uh I don't know accessories maybe like earrings if that would count as beauty but uh, the terms are very loose and once again just like i use this money as i see fit sometimes i would take earrings out of clothing sometimes i would take earrings out of beauty it's very uh, it's not set in stone birthdays is next and birthdays is saving for all of my friends and family birthdays uh, of the current year so I have each uh, amount allocated to each birthday and then there I save the total I think it makes sense just as it is no real explanation needed Christmas is saving for Christmas I have once again five tabs for my sister friends mom, mom dad and miscellaneous so either events or any other people not covered by these envelopes um, I think it makes sense to start saving for Christmas early because once December comes everybody knows that it's very very expensive <laughs> and if you don't have money saved up it can be very damaging to your budget so I like to be prepared clothing is next clothing is again shoes clothes anything that goes in the category of clothing and gifts is everything that might be unexpected in the gift somebody who i haven't saved for a birthday or other i don't know holidays that might come up and i used to keep 500 in here but i realized that's just too much and i put it down to 200 because i think that's enough for an unexpected gift i don't think i would give anybody a gift for 200 but who knows so that was the Ruby Rose binder and the other short term sinking funds binder is Johnny Cash. We have health here again this is kind of the same situation as with beauty. I have five tabs. We have therapy. I have three different therapists. <laughs> I'm not crazy. It's just <laughs> uh, all of them do different things. So I go to therapy. That's why I need that tab. Dentist. I have a 500 in here because dentistry is very expensive. Uh, so I like to have this buffer because like one, one filling can be up to like 200 euros. So it just makes sense to keep that large of a sum. Physio is my physiotherapist appointment. I go for massages and uh, workouts so I have that medicine is anything like pills uh, over the top a counter medicine uh, prescription uh, pills and stuff like that and then miscellaneous is everything else that's not covered for health in any of these categories so like blood work um, other specialist checkups um, like uh, health equipment and stuff like that so that's covered in health I hope that this video would, if you're like starting budget or, or whatever, might help you revamp your budget or give you some ideas. So I also, before I started on YouTube, uh, my channel, I used to watch like cash stuffers for a half a year before I even realized what I need for my budget. And I um, got the ideas from everybody around me. Uh, so next is holidays and holidays is specific uh, holidays that I like to save up for like Valentine's Day, Father's Day, Halloween, Christmas, New Year's and everything that's not covered like technically gifts for specific people or something. This is just for like let's say Halloween I want to get a pumpkin, I want to get some s'mores or something and I like to set money uh, aside for that. This is technically not a necessary envelope. You can just be good with the birthdays and gifts ones but... Uh, I think events being prepared a bit for events is also good subscriptions has two categories in it one is my phone and that's why it has like two balance trackers uh, subscriptions has my phone 
bill and my gym and Pilates subscription. So just also self-explanatory. I take money here for my phone each month and then to pay for gym and Pilates and travel. Once again, self-explanatory, anything that has to do with travel, hotels, flights, taxis, visas, passports, uh, everything that I spend on while I'm traveling is coming from this envelope. I don't usually spend money from my weekly envelope. So I'm in travel. That's why I like to keep this at a fairly high amount just to make sure that I always have funds if I go to travel and then I'm already so tired from talking I don't know how long this video is gonna be but I hope you're enjoying it so far and the next category is long-term sinking funds so as I said the distinct distinction between long-term and short-term is that these two are very long-term so this is retirement this is deposit for my first house this is like an emergency fund that I don't plan to use this is pets this is weddings this is babies everything that I don't have currently but do plan to have in the future so we're starting with the pink binder and here we have um babies first so once again baby self-explanatory it might be for my children it might be for children that my i don't know sister decides to have and something in if anybody unexpectedly in my circle has a child i can take this money and spend it on a gift or whatever a uh, car is mainly for kind of like uh, fun for my current car, but it's more like I'm viewing this as a fun for my new car, my next car. I don't plan to have a car soon, uh, a new car, but it will be nice to have a certain amount of money once I decide to buy one. Deposit is a deposit for my apartment or my house I decide to have or any other like, um, what is it called? Uh, I forgot the word in English, uh, not investment, um, property. So property in the future. Uh, if I do want to take like a loan or mortgage out of my bank, we, you need to usually have like a first payment for a down payment, a deposit payment. So not sure even how much or when I plan to buy, but I decided to start saving for it now because it just makes sense. And then emergency fund has 3000 euros. It's just an emergency fund to have if anything happens unexpectedly. I, first of all, I don't have like health insurance. Um, so if, I don't know, anything tragic, knock on wood, might happen. I could use this money for it. And once again, uh, turning back to my first point where I said why I use uh, placeholder bills. So for example, I have 3000 euros in the emergency fund. I don't know when I might use this money. I don't know when it's gonna happen in a month, in a year, in 10 years. So it would just make absolutely zero sense for me to keep 3000 euros in this envelope in cash. So right now it's sitting in my bank account, accruing interest each year, um, each month, each day. So it just money makes more money. So it just makes sense. If you keep your emergency fund at such a large amount, like 3000, whatever dollars, euros, whatever in cash, some people do like have a cash emergency fund and some people have a savings, but if you keep everything in cash, I feel like that's a little bit, uh, might be not the best idea because, um, yeah, it's just, I think better to keep it in a account that creates interest and gives you more money in the end, especially on like the categories like babies where I think I spent like once in all of my three years of uh, budgeting from this envelope and all of the other times it just sits in my bank account. So yeah, that's why mainly I use prop bills for uh, categories like these where I don't spend out of often. And then uh, our other long-term sinking funds binder is the baby blue one. And the first is pets. Once again, I don't have any pets, but this is for like whenever I decide to have a pet. Once again, the beauty of uh, making your own budget is that whenever you decide you can move money around, you can take envelopes out, to take in, you can create new categories. So let's say I decide to have kids before pets, I can use all of this money and put it in my baby's fund. And it's just, that's the beauty of creating a budget that works for you. You can really customize it however you like and what you need in that moment at the time. Retirement is next and it's also self-explanatory saving for my retirement. Um, I currently uh, have zero euros in here because I bought a lot of uh, stocks 
for, uh, for my retirement technically so I had to pay myself back I finally did so with the next cash stuffing we're finally ha gonna have money in here that I didn't already spent to kind of pay myself back I hope that made sense technology is next and it is anything that I may need like a new phone new iPad new camera whatever is technology wise and also very good to have like a buffer because if a phone nowadays is like 1000 over 1000 euros like I'm not just gonna have 1000 euros to spend on a new phone and I would like to have something to pay you know what I'm okay it makes sense okay yeah I'm just gonna stop there and weddings once again I uh, would love to get married one day, but uh, don't have anything going on in the horizon. So just also, if anybody of my friends decide to get married, I could use this money as a wedding gift or whatever. And also, if it's a destination wedding, it might need, may take me some um, money to get their flights, hotels, whatever. So also have a uh, fun for that. And the next uh, binder is my savings binder. So I did recently finish my savings um, box, my 3000 euro savings box. So I decided to start uh, new challenges. This is the yellow, uh, the pastel yellow, a very nice color. A lot of people I have followed on YouTube who do cash stuffings and stuff like that, they don't believe in savings challenges. They say it doesn't really make sense to just put them in different envelopes. If you want to put them in certain sinking funds, just do it. No need to put them here and then reallocate them. But I like savings challenges. I think they're fun. And I think uh, that, yeah, I can do whatever I want with my budget. So I don't think I showed this binder previously in my channel. So this is kind of a novelty for everybody. I'm just gonna run th very quickly through uh, the challenges because uh, I think this video is like already 30 minutes long. But uh, deck of cards is the first challenge. It's just going to be uh, me uh, setting a certain uh, amount to each sign of the cards and then taking a deck of cards and seeing okay a heart falls out that's going to be let's say a one and then i'm going to add the amounts um i think i did this uh, deck of cards savings already previously on my channel like a year or a half a year back so it's just i don't have a deck of cards to show you how it's going to work on hand but i think it's, i hope it made sense um envelope challenge uh, also just either I'm going to fill in specific amounts for each envelope or I'm just going to use one to 50. Um, I'm not sure actually which uh, saving challenges I'm going to start f doing first, uh, but I guess you're going to see it in my cash stuffing video or whenever I decide to stuff. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25 is also an old challenge. It's just uh, amounts where I decide to stuff and then cross out the ones that I stuffed. It also only has 5s, 10s, 15s, 20s, and 25s. Roll the dice, also very similarly to a uh, deck of cards. I'm going to have two die. I'm, uh, two dice I'm gonna roll them and then whatever falls on the dice I'm gonna color in and stop that amount um, and then the last um, challenge scratch off I do sell these scratch offs on my Etsy shop I do have five different levels I have six here because this was like a prop before I decided to publish these I made this like as an example so uh, yeah, I'm going to do this first. And then I have five different levels for five different income levels, bronze, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. And I'm going to do these two. So uh, how I'm going to know how much I'm stuffing and saving. So I'm going to allocate each week something from my income uh, to go into this. And then I'm just going to redistribute the money how I feel like. And then if any other rollover money I have, I'm going to also put this in these envelopes. My only challenge now is deciding if I'm going to focus on one uh, savings challenge and when I'm done it, I restuff it into um, my binders and then move on to the other one or I'm going to do uh, several challenges at the same time. I don't know. We're going to figure it out. But also I will use fake bills like prop bills in these 
because once again, it might be that it's gonna take me six months to finish a challenge and it just doesn't make sense for me to keep it in cash if in those six months it can just stay in the bank, uh, accrue interest to me and then I will just see visually, okay, I have 100 euros in deck of cards in my account and then et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you might have questions uh, that I didn't answer in this video. If you did, let me know in the comments down below and I'm gonna try my bestest to answer, but I hope I explained everything in a way that was understandable and clear to everybody. If not, sorry, let me know and I'm gonna try to re-explain it. But as I said, I feel like this video was already so, so long. So I'm gonna stop talking. <laughs> but yes, this was the video for today. Very informative, very just talking me to you, explaining, and I hope you enjoyed it. I will be back uh, soon with a cash stuffing video. And yeah, I hope you will enjoy that one too and you stay um, around to see it. But I wish you a very wonderful day, morning, evening, wherever you are. And I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.